fellow diamond painting addicts and welcome back to Diamond Painting Anonymous. Today I am going to be doing a kind of an unusual whip and chat. Um, it's going to be more of me chatting than actually working and I apologize for that but I'm going to explain why. So my original intention for this whip and chat had been to work on my sugar skull that I purchased for Drills and Chills and if you haven't seen the unboxing of that I'll stick a a card up there so you can check it out um, and I was really excited to do this kit one because it's an event two because it's small and I could finish it fairly quickly and three I thought it was cute so I started working on it and here you can see what I have done just this small little section here however I started running into all kinds of issues and let me explain why um, the I don't know if the drills are too large. I don't know if the canvas is too small. I don't know if there was a mix-up. I don't know what happened. All I know is these drills do not fit. The reason that these are all kind of laying nicely right here is because last night I removed all of the ones that are popping and there's still a few. There's one right there it looks like that's still popping and took them out because I can't get them to fit. So let me kind of show you in another section exactly what I mean because I think it demonstrates it a little bit better. And so down here at the bottom because I thought okay well I'll start at the bottom or at the, I actually started at the top corner but I think this demonstrates the problem the easiest. Um, you can see here I hope that I laid the first drill in the corner and then I continued laying them. And you can see just in six drills, I now suddenly am out of alignment with the symbols on the back of the can on the canvas. And the longer I go, the worse it gets. And I tried kind of trying to spread them out, but then there's way too much gapping between the drills. If you try and shove them all together, the symbols show through behind, which is annoying. And it just got worse and worse. I started out up here is actually where I started. And if you can see, like this drill is popping up, that one I can't get in there, that one won't lay straight. And you can see I'm already, the, the symbols are not actually behind the drills. And you know, when you're first filling in, it seems like it's going okay, but the more drills you add, the worse it gets. See here on the side where I was trying to kind of shove them in and they just won't fit neatly in a straight line. And so I finally just decided, you know what? I think, and I don't know that this is what happened, but this is what I'm telling myself. I think this canvas is made for square drills because square drills are slightly smaller than round ones. Round ones are typically 2.8 um, millimeters in diameter um, and square drills are only 2.5. Now you can, I think, get some round drills in smaller sizes, so maybe that's an issue. It was supposed to be a round, but the drills are not the right size doesn't matter to me. All I know is that I was going insane trying to work on this. And so I finally decided, you know what? I save all those spares. I'm going to head to my spare box and see what I can do and if I can make this work with square drills. Now, the downside of that means that all of these drills that are round that I've already placed, I'm going to be taking off, which is obnoxious and annoying to do, but I decided I would rather do that than just completely abandon the whole canvas because I do think it's a cute image. So I have all of those white drills up there to pull off as well as all of these in this section here. And I've actually already pulled some of them off um, because I had done clear down to here because after I abandoned up here, I thought, well, I'll just start in the middle and work my way out. That way, by the time I get to the edge, things will work. Well it didn't. It just ended up things not being aligned and drills popping and just literally making me nutso more than usual. 
So I just decided this is what I'm gonna do. Like this is why I save my spares, right? Not just so that I can fix issues, but also, you know, part of saving my spares was at some point I was gonna save my, and use my spares for my heaven and earth designs so that I didn't have to buy drills. Now I will say my spare storage collection is probably not anywhere close enough for me to do that yet. So when I get to my heaven and earth designs, I will likely for the first one, just buy the drills that go with it because this kit only has 20 colors. And here you can see these are the round drills added up or kitted up. So I know I'm not going to have enough of the background color in any of the spares that I have to finish this kit. So I am at the very least going to be ordering this color of drills for because it's the background and the skull itself. So I need to order that color. Then I went through all of my spares and I pulled out all of my squares for colors that were in this kit that I had. So I have them all pulled out. The reason some of these are upside down is because those are drills that I do not have spares for, or like this one, I had some spares, but not enough, and now I'm out. So I either need to get spares from a different kit or I need to just order some. So, and some of the spares that I have, I will have enough, some of them I won't. So for instance, this particular number, 550 in rounds, I have plenty of squares in it. So I won't have any problem with that one. Um, for $37.99, I have plenty of spares, so that's no problem. However, I already ran out of this pink, and this pink right here, $8.94, there aren't a ton of drills in the kit, but this is all I have for um, squares, so I might make it, I don't know yet. Um, and of course, the risk I run when I order these is that if I've already run out of a color like this one, the dye lots may not be the same. So what I'm hoping is I have tried to finish in sections so that if I have to order a different color, it'll be far enough away on the canvas that it won't be readily apparent that they're not the same dye lot if that happens, but we'll see. Um, for this one, number 800, I did have spares. However, you can see this kit and my spares are not the same color. So again, I run that dye lot issue and I'm just gonna take my chances. What this means, however, is that I probably won't finish this in time for drills and chills because I've got to order drills or wait to cabbage some from other kits. I haven't quite decided what I'm doing yet. Um, there are already a couple of colors that I've run out of that I need to order more, so I know I don't have any more spares currently. So I'm going to be working on this kind of sporadically, but not as quickly as I had intended to because of this issue, but I am going to complete it. It's not going to defeat me. So what I have done is I have gone back and I have worked up pieces of it in squares and it's working out so much better. I do have some gapping, but I would rather have the gapping and, you know, kind of go back in and fix it and worry about that than I would dealing with popping drills because that was just driving me crazy. So, um, and I don't have all of the drills in here yet, so, so there is that as well. Let me pull off. I've completed some down here as well. Let me just pull all these off. So you can see here what I have done in the squares. And I already think it looks a million times better than it did with the rounds, um, even with some of the gapping issues that I have. But things are not popping and they fit. So that's what I'm going to go with. So 
Again, I still have lots of drills that I need to pick off. I'm not going to be doing that while we do this whip and chat because I wouldn't be quite that mean. I've already made you listen to me for way too long just talking without actually working on anything. But I wanted kind of to explain what's going on. The other idea that I had was that I was going to replace some of these colors with ABs. My problem is I don't have very many square ABs and the ones that I do have, none of the colors matched. So there is always the possibility because some of these colors, like some of the greens, there aren't very many at all. And so I was going to, um, you know, just completely change the color because you'd never know, but we'll see. I haven't got that far yet. I want to work up a little bit more of it before they, I do that. So I do have some square um, crystals that I bought from uh, Shimmering Canvases. So I went and had a look through those and I found this color. Now I have, this is 209, in the kit is 208 and 210. So I might be switching one of them out for this one because it's pretty close and you wouldn't be able to tell, I don't think. Um, if I switch this out for 210 or I may just order them. I don't know yet. I'm, I'm going to be going back in once I kind of figure out which ones I have a lot of and which ones I'm going to need. I know I'm going to need the background color, so I will definitely be ordering that one. But as far as some of these other colors go, as I work on other kits, which I will be doing during the two months of Drills and Chills, I might find other square spares that I can use in this one. So that is my plan going forward. So that's what I'm going to be doing. So I have already picked off quite a few of this, the round drills that I put down, but I am going to be working on the round ones. So don't go anywhere. I'm going to get set up. I'll be right back. Okay, guys, I've zoomed in a bit. Hopefully that is close enough for you to kind of see what I am doing um, and for me to continue my whip and chat here. So again, I'm going to be using my fancy French pen. I have put a, a steel placer tip on here on this end. I had uh, just a plastic multi-placer on this end because I was trying to do the backgrounds and stuff, but that was back when I was doing the round drills instead of the square ones. So yeah. So the pen is from the French pen shop on Etsy and I'll put a link in the description below if you wanna check them out. This is one of my Bella Art De Nicole trays. I will put a link below to them in case you wanna check them out. And I'm just gonna dive in here, let's see. I just kind of opened up all of this and left it this way so I can kind of see what I'm doing and where I want to start. So I'm going to start with all these dark E's over here because I know I have plenty of drills in this color, in the squares. So I'm going to start there. So I know maybe lots of people would have ab just abandoned this with the issues. Maybe some people would have kept going with the um, popping drills, but honestly, I've never had that issue before and it literally was driving me crazy. And I guess that's a reason, you know, I save my spares because I don't want it to be I don't want to be wasteful. Um, I could just throw my spares away, but then I wouldn't have been able to share all this with you guys and show you how I'm going to hopefully fix it. So there is that. Um, so yeah. And I think working up the, the flowers and things around this are not going to take nearly as long as perhaps the background itself will take and so I'm hoping it'll work up pretty quickly I can move on to some other projects and end up with some additional spares so that I can continue to work on this one but yeah it's not going to be done anywhere nearly as quickly as I thought it would be 
but that's okay. It's a learning experience. And that's one of the things that I like about diamond painting. And it's one of the things I like sharing on my YouTube channel that, you know, not, not everything is not necessarily going to be perfect when you're diamond painting. And here's how you can do some kind of, you know, things that are going to make it individual. So somebody else could buy this kit and maybe they won't have the issues that I had. You know, maybe I just, somebody had a bad day at work and when they pulled the drills that go with this kit, they pulled the wrong size. It, they pulled the wrong type of canvas to go with the drills. I don't know what happened. Could have been a lot of different things. I don't know. And it doesn't really matter. The up, you know, the, what matters is I got it. It's not working for me. And so I'm doing something different to make it work for me. So what's that old saying? When life gives you lemons, make lemonade. My uncle, my great uncle actually, but we just called him uncle, sent me a card. I was in a car accident and I had been injured when I was younger and he sent me a card that said, when life gives you lemons, stick them in your bra. He thought he was hilarious. So, this is also, he was struck by lightning. He survived, but he was struck by lightning. So, you know, I think that scrambled his brains a little bit. He was fun though. Okay, so let's see, where else do I have this symbol? And I have this kind of zoomed in, so I hope you guys can kind of see what I'm doing. I mean, not kind of, I hope you guys can see what I'm doing. I need to put some more wax in my pen. Let me see, can you see if I'm all the way over here? Yes, you can see that, okay. So if I stick in this area, let me move this over a little bit. I'll work over here so that you can see. Let me put some more, more sticky stuff in my pen. So I'm being lazy today and just using regular pink wax because I haven't loaded glue dots into this pen yet because I just got this pen and I was, this was going to be a new start for drills and chills. And this has all just kind of been laying around. And then it was just one problem after another. So I problem solved, right? That's what you do when you have problems, you problem solve. So it does sound like my neighbor's dog has finally stopped barking. So there's that. I was filming some other videos this morning and Hope that you can't hear him. I don't think you'll be able to. You guys, I hear lots of outside noise that you guys don't seem to hear. So my mic is doing its job. So still debating on whether I want to upgrade some equipment or not. Lots and lots of questions. I'm almost at another goal. So I want to do another giveaway when I hit that goal. But then the question is, what do I do for a giveaway once I hit that goal? Um, I don't wanna give away the same things that I gave away last time, although I could. I do have more trays that I could give away. Um, I do have more tips that I could give away. Um, but I don't know what I wanna do. So I've been thinking about that. All the issues with this canvas that I was trying to problem solve um, trying to figure out where I want to go from here as far as, you know, what videos do I want to do next? Um, I have some videos that have been requested, um, that I'm going to be working on. I've already done a comparison of steel tips. So if you haven't seen that one, check it out. I'll put a, a card up there in the corner so you can check that out if you haven't already. Um, I think the next thing I'm going to do is a tray comparison. I think there's still a couple more companies I would like to order from, but 
at this point, I think I'm just going to go with what I've got. I've got a lot of trays that I want to talk about. So there will be a comparison video for those and I will be giving you my thoughts on them. And you know, you can diamond paint with any tray. You can diamond paint with the stuff that comes in the kit. You don't have to buy all the fancy pens or the fancy trays or the glue dots or you don't need any of that. So, you know, don't feel like you have to go out and spend a whole bunch of money in order to be a real diamond painter because you don't. Um, I think we just kind of get in those mindsets, you know, of, well, I need to do this or I need to do that. Like, um, somebody made a comment on Instagram, you know, are you a diamond painter if you haven't done a peacock diamond painting? I have, so I can check that box off. Um, my, I think next box to check off, check off for myself is, am I a real diamond painter until I do a Chuck Pinson? Um, because I haven't done one of his yet. I actually have two different canvases of his. One is a Dreamer Designs and one is a Diamond Art Club. And I debated opening one of them because there is a chuck along going on right now. But if I had my druthers of the two that I have, I would rather do the Diamond Art Club one and it's big and I just didn't want to open something that big just yet. So um, I'll have to wait and see because I do want to open a Dreamer Designs and do one of theirs, but I don't know if I want to open the Chuck Pinson. Um, I have two Dreamer Designs by Dominic Davison and I have one by another lady whose name escapes me at the moment. And I would like to do one of those. But they're all kind of landscape larger ones too. Which is why they haven't been opened yet. Because I have to intersperse my big ones with some of these smaller ones. So I feel like I'm getting somewhere. So I've got a couple of smaller ones that I'm going to be working on. Um, one I've already got kitted up. It's a round, though. Um, the other one that I'm going to be kitting up is a square. So maybe I'll get lucky and some of the colors I'm missing in this one will be in that one. We'll see. So I'm going to move this over and down a little bit because I want to finish. I'm trying to see here if you guys can see. Yeah, I'm going to finish the the dark purple in this section over here while I've got these out. So let me cover this back up so I'm not laying my arm in it. Okay. So and I've also had on my mind I want to do a storage video where I talk about some of the different storage systems that I've purchased and which ones I like and why, kind of do like a ranking of them. And again, you know, you don't need any fancy storage. Um, you can make do with just some stuff you've got hanging around your house or some really cheap stuff that you picked up, you know, to, to store diamonds in anything will work. So, um, but yeah, I want to do a comparison of some of those. So that's kind of in the back of my brain. I have bought a couple of new systems that I've not tried before. So I'm going to try those out. And I actually have a third one that I've wanted to try and haven't. So I finally pulled the trigger and bought that one. And then, knock on wood, at that point, I think I'm going to call the amount of storage that I own good, unless something really amazing comes along, because I have way more than I thought I would ever purchase in the first place. I have way more than I ever needed, so I think it'll be okay if I don't buy any more. And honestly, you guys, I, I keep a spreadsheet 
of all my diamond painting stuff to kind of keep track of, you know, what I'm spending and how much I'm putting into the channel. And, you know, while I have not spent more money than we have by any stretch, when I just kind of glance totaled it the other day, yikes, I need to severely curtail my spending for a while and work on the things that I already own and not get carried away on buying things constantly. I know we like to all look at the new releases and we like to see them, but I mean, honestly, how many times can you watch the big, you know, YouTuber diamond painters um, unbox the same thing? So, and I think, you know, when we're talking new releases, that's where I'm at. I don't watch a lot of unboxing videos anymore because it's the same ones. And, you know, once I've seen it, I've seen it. So, and also Diamond Art Club lately just hasn't really had a lot of um, kits that I want. I don't know why that is, but let's see. What is, this is D's. Okay, I have quite a few of those. So let me pour these out. I think I have enough of these that I will be able to finish the whole thing. Let me see if there's some under here. There's a few, so I'll leave that off while I finish. I'm gonna start over here so I don't have to move the canvas again right away. And I just saw an E that I missed. Gosh darn it. The more things change, the more they stay the same, right? Here I am thinking I'm getting these all out of the way and nope. So anyway, um, um, one of the other things I've been considering is pulling out my oldest diamond painting and working on it, which I've been avoiding. My oldest one is a diamond art club that I know has a lot of 310 in it and I just am not ready for that yet. But I do also have a couple of Treasure Studios art canvases that I purchased around the same time that, while not the oldest in my stash, are some of the oldest in my stash. So I may be unboxing a couple of those and working on those. So you may be seeing less unboxings on my channels, or channels, on my channel and more kidding up and whipping chats and other things because I'm going to be working on some larger canvases. So which kind of stinks because I should have done this during the summer when I had extra time to diamond paint instead of doing it now when I'm back at work and I have less time but it is what it is, right? So maybe another event will come along that I feel like, oh, this canvas will fit that. This canvas will fit that. That's what I need to do. I was actually also debating um, what I want to do for kind of upcoming videos, you know, I'm trying to plan ahead to kind of plan out videos so that I know I've got content for you guys. Um, so like I was just looking the other day, I was like, oh, I should buy some Christmas canvases so that I have some Christmas things to kind of unbox because it's going to be Christmas before long. Isn't that a scary thought here at the beginning of September? Um, so there's that and um, I had intended to do like some advent style work on a canvas um, during December to do like an advent calendar type of thing 
but I don't know what kind of canvas I want to do that on. I think my original intention had been to do a mystery painting. I don't know if I still want to do that because then I run the risk of, you know, it's probably not going to be Christmas themed as a mystery painting. So is that what I want to do? Which probably doesn't matter. I watched someone do a Halloween mystery painting. It ended up being a Halloween mystery painting for their advent kind of work that they were doing, but it just sounded like fun. So that's kind of in the back of my brain. I was actually just thinking today, maybe it would be fun to take a canvas that I know what it is, but not tell you guys and kind of have it covered up, you know, in pieces. So it would reveal itself as, as I went. But then I was trying to think, okay, well, what canvases do I have that would lend themselves to that? Cause it would be kind of fun to do something like, um, I don't have this canvas, but what I was thinking was I've seen someone do festive fireplace and one of the comments they made would it, that it was like doing a lot of little diamond paintings and one big diamond painting because there were lots of little kind of pieces of it. So I was trying to think, do I have a diamond painting in my stash that I could use that would be something like that where there would be kind of lots of little sections that I could then section off to be a section to do each day. So there'd be like a little reveal each day. Um, but I don't know if I have anything like that in my stash. I've got to go back and look through my stash and see what I've got. Maybe there is, but if it's a big painting like that, then the other side of that is I likely wouldn't finish it in 30 days. So how fun would that be? Because also if I'm doing kind of that every day, I don't want the sections to be the size of these release papers because I wouldn't be able to finish a section that size in an hour. So I would have to make the sections much smaller, which is good because then, then they would take less time and I would get my 30 days in, 31 days for December, but I would like to have a completed painting at the end of it. So I don't know that I could do much bigger than 30 by 40, 30 by 50 maybe and get it done. Um, so there's that to consider as well. So, cause a lot of my diamond art clubs are not small. So I don't think I'd want to start something that I wasn't going to be able to finish within that time frame, Cause that's kind of the point. So yeah, just kind of lots of questions floating around in my brain. Also floating around in my brain, do I want to do an event? Um, I kind of do. I would kind of like to host one and have all that fun of having people sign up and do the giveaways and stuff. But also it seems like a lot of work. And because I have another job that I do, I don't know if I have enough time to kind of dedicate to it and do it the way that I really want to. Um, and I think it's possible to kind of go overboard too. And I don't want to burn myself out. I mean, some of these people, I watch them and I think, oh my goodness, I don't think I could ever do that because I would burn myself out. So, you know, more power to them if they can do it. Um, there's a YouTuber who's doing kind of a, an event alongside Drills and Chills. It's a Halloween themed event, but she literally is doing a video every single day for the entire month. And, you know, I realize I just talked about that for Advent, but that's different than coming up. Like she has a theme for every day of the week. So, you know, some days she's doing um, an unboxing, some days she's doing a whip and chat, some days she's doing, I don't even know what all else, but it just, I, I, I was overwhelmed for her just looking at her schedule. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know if I want to, I don't know if I can commit myself to that much at this point. So I need to take a look at my own kind of life work balance and figure out where I want to be. I'm trying to look over here and see if I got all the D's in this section before I kind of 
move on because the D's are hard to tell from the B's. They're a different color, but they're close enough. Sometimes it's hard to tell. It looks like I got all of them. There's one right there. Okay, so I can move this over a little bit. So let me look here. Where am I at? I'm right here. Okay, I'll just move this over a little bit and then I can kind of go this way. Cover this up so I'm not laying my arm in it. So, um, yeah, I've just been thinking about events and trying to decide, you know, what I can commit myself to, what I would want to do as far as that goes. Um, you know, do I do a YouTube giveaway? I am going to be doing another give YouTube giveaway when I get to my next goal. Um, but I've debated doing an Instagram giveaway as well. I do follow quite a few people over there. If you don't follow me over there and you have an Instagram, please do. It's at Diamond Painting Anonymous. Would love to see you over there. Um, I do post a lot more pictures and things over there than you know you can do with YouTube. So if you like looking at pretty things, you can follow me over there. Um, I love Instagram just for the fact that it's visual. It's kind of like it's kind of like my Flickr for diamond painters. Does anybody remember Flickr? Does anybody use Flickr anymore? Um, I think sometimes that's the problem with all these social media things. Everybody is busy trying to be all things to everyone and that's not why people use it. Like people go to TikTok because they want to watch videos. You can watch videos on Facebook and Instagram. They do have them, reels on Instagram and you can put videos up on Facebook, but you know, TikTok is known for videos. Um, Instagram, for me, is for looking at pictures. Um, you know, people post other things. You can post a story, you can post a reel. I very rarely look at any of those. I look at the pictures on my feed and that's what I'm there for. So, um, you know, I, I read something the other day that Instagram was going to be introducing something else because they're trying to pe compete with some other social media platform. And I thought, okay, well, one, Instagram is owned by Facebook. So that kind of seemed like competition, which seemed dumb. Um, they already have, you know, why, why would you compete with Facebook? But um, because Facebook lets you do the same thing. Um, and I forget even what social media platform it was that they were going to try and compete with, but I just thought, ugh. I have a love hate relationship with social media. I mean, the original purpose of it, I think is great to let people kind of communicate better. I think what it has turned into is just kind of a cesspool. Sometimes people use the anonymity of the internet to be jerks because, you know, people, and I try really hard to just be one of those people that is, I don't social media a lot, but when I do, I try not to be, try to remember that rule, you know, that mom always said, if you don't have anything nice to say, just don't say anything. Because for me, you know, the point of social media is it's take it or leave it. I mean, if you don't like some content, mine or anybody else's, then don't watch it. I mean, don't get me wrong. I would love to have lots of people as a subscriber, but I want people who like what I do. If you don't like what I'm doing, why are you here? So, I mean, and, and I apply that to myself as well. Like I don't follow people whose things, you know, whatever they're doing, whether it's technology or diamond painting or cars or, you know, whatever all the niches out there are. If I don't like what they're doing, then I don't follow them, you know? And there are times when I start out following someone thinking, okay, this, you know, video was cool. I'll follow them. And then after a couple of more videos, I'm like, you know what? This doesn't seem like the place for me. So, um, and plus social media tends to be kind of fickle. I, when I first started my YouTube channel, I went out and followed a bunch of diamond painters because, you know, that's a good way for me to kind of see who else is out there, kind of get to know some people as well as see, you know, 
what kind of things people are doing. And maybe some of those will spark an idea for something that I want to do. And so, you know, you go out and follow. And I tried to follow people like I don't really follow a whole lot of people that have tens of thousands of subscribers that are diamond painters because I feel like one, my follow doesn't make a lot of difference to those people. Um, and two, I'm seeing the same content from smaller YouTubers and I'd rather support the smaller YouTubers. So, you know, shout out to anyone who's trying to do this YouTube thing and has an under a thousand subscribers because it's hard. You know, there are some people who get lucky and have something go kind of viral and they get their thousand subscribers right away. Um, and why is a thousand subscribers important, you ask? Because at a thousand subscribers, you can monetize your channel, which I realize is annoying for people because then you're watching ads, but it's a way for small YouTubers like me. Like I don't ever, my goal is never to have tens of thousands of subscribers. It would be nice, but that's not, at least at this point, that's not my goal. Um, my goal is to do this for fun and to share this with other people who enjoy diamond painting like I do and to make a few dollars that I could put in my pocket that will then go to more content because let's face it, that's where most of my money goes is towards more content. Um, I mean, I'm enjoying the diamond painting, don't get me wrong, but um, yeah, so... And I know that there are YouTubers who have like um, PayPal's out there so you can donate to them or they have like the buy me a coffee or the Kofi or whatever it is in your neck of the woods where you go and you donate money for them, which I mean, essentially it's just a whole bunch of different kinds of Patreon. Um, so, or they have, they're like affiliates with either, either diamond painting companies or they are an Amazon affiliate and they put up Amazon links, which I have considered doing because Lord knows I buy enough off of Amazon. If I was an affiliate and I had affiliate links, I might actually make some money given the amount of things that, well, no, I wouldn't. I, anything I made, I would spend and it would go right back to Amazon. So, which is probably what they want. So, but anyway, all that aside, kind of got off on a tangent there. Um, you know, we're supporting small businesses. If you're out there looking at YouTube, try and find some small YouTubers to support as well. Don't just support the people who, you know, are kind of already established. I mean, follow them as well as you, if you want to, they're not bad. I'm just saying, you know, in the scheme of things, one follow to someone who has 20,000 subscribers is nothing. One follow to someone who has a hundred subscribers is huge. And it really does make a difference. And it really does make those small YouTubers like me feel amazing to kind of see those numbers going up and, um, you know, see that you're making progress. So, I mean, I'm hoping that what I do is enjoyable for those of you who are following my channel. And if you are following, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. It makes my day. If you're not following and you're watching this, hey, go hit that subscribe button and make my day. So I haven't checked my follower account in a couple of days, but I know I'm really close to a goal and I would love to do another giveaway. So, cause I had a lot of fun doing that. Those two were stuck together. So, where am I at time-wise here? Oh, I have a little bit of time left. My husband called me earlier. He is in the swamps of Louisiana, working hard to get power restored to people down there who were hit by the hurricane. So, if you are in that neck of the woods, I hope you are okay and you came through the storm okay. If you are one of the unlucky people who had your power knocked out, 
please be kind to the people who are working to get it back on. One of them might be my husband. And most people are generally pretty nice to them when he travels like that for storm work. But I know people also get frustrated because it never goes as fast as you want it to. And especially when it's something big like this, you know, it's going to be days before some people, possibly more than a week before some people get power back on. And even though it doesn't look like it, you know, the, the people who are like him, who are kind of the boots on the ground, they are doing the best they can. He and others like him are not in charge of where they go or what they're told to do. So be kind. That's all I'm asking. Be kind. It's hot. It's humid. He's going to be covered in bug bites. He called me this morning and where they're working at is in one of the, the areas where the floodwaters haven't completely receded yet. So there's lots of water in the ditches and apparently some alligators. So as someone who lives in the middle of the U.S., alligators are not something I've ever seen except in a zoo. Not really thrilled that he's going to be out stomping around with them. He, of course, is fascinated. That's one of the reasons he likes doing what he does, because he gets to kind of see all of these places that he gets to travel to. I think I've mentioned before, he's probably seen more of the United States than I have, and I've lived here my whole life. Um, because he travels around so much for work that he kind of gets to go to all of these places and see things. Sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes he stays in some pretty rough areas, but he actually loves it, even though, like I said, the, the humidity he does not love. He is from Canada, and so the heat and humidity are a couple of his least favorite things. He doesn't mind working in a snowstorm. He's used to it. But yeah, the, the humidity and the heat is not something that he's used to. And actually where we live, we don't really have a lot of humidity either. So it gets hot here during the summer. I mean, it's the July and August. It will typically be over 100 degrees at least once a week, if not more. The late August, when everybody heads back to school, is always usually pretty hot. But um, we don't have humidity like they do in the South. We've, we've vacationed in New Orleans before, and um, that's where he is, around New Orleans. And I loved, loved, loved New Orleans. I would love to live down there, except for the heat and humidity. I, I mean, it's one of those, you get up in the morning, you take a shower, you walk out the door, and you're immediately soaked in sweat, and it's like, you, why, why did I even bother taking a shower? Because now I need another one. I'm going to scoot this over a little bit so I can work on this last little section here trying to look and see did I miss any over here did I miss any through here I don't think I did Let's see there's one right there and there's one right there move this down a little bit so I can see those and I'm not laying my arm in it But yeah, we had an absolute blast when we went down there for vacation. I think that has been, aside from our vacations to Washington, D.C., to see all the stuff in D.C., I think New Orleans was my favorite vacation. And, but it is too hot and humid for me. I would know, I would not survive living there long term. I know I wouldn't. So... But it sure was nice. We had a lot of fun on that vacation. Those two are stuck together. So let me pick up a different one. I'm actually really loving this pen. I need to I need to order this background color so I can get 
I put this multi-placer on here. I'm using the plastic ones instead of my steel ones because I don't have any big steel ones that are the ones that I like. I tried to order a nine placer and before I could get it, it went out of stock and the seller canceled my order and it has not come back in stock yet. So I am waiting on that one. So we'll see, I did order some of those decorative steel tips. So if the unboxing of those hasn't happened yet, be on the lookout for those. Um, actually, I don't know if they're steel tips. I think it just says they're metal. So I don't know if they're steel, but I did get some of the bigger multi-placers and they look like I will like them. So we'll see, but I haven't, I haven't done all of my unboxings and stuff yet. So I haven't actually got those out to work with yet. That's the other thing about doing a YouTube channel. Time becomes very fluid because it's like, wait, I filmed that, the unboxing of it, but I haven't used it yet. Or I'm like, wait, did I film that? Have I done anything with that yet? Where am I at? Future me gets very confused sometimes, which is past me by the time you see it. But yeah, present me has a lot of try trouble keeping track of all three of us even with all my planning stuff. I debated showing you guys some of that stuff too. What I use to kind of plan out my YouTube videos and keep track, what I use to plan out my kind of daily life because I do use a planner. I use a budget planner. I think I've mentioned before, my husband and I are working really hard to kind of pay off our debts and we're, we're making progress and things like this when he goes on storm work and makes a nice paycheck in a short amount of time actually helps because we're hoping that the last little bit we owe on his car is going to get paid off. And it always seems to work out, luckily, that whenever we have a, a kind of a bigger bill coming due, that he gets some kind of storm work, which means we don't have to pull out of our savings to pay whatever big bill is coming due because we want to pay off his car that's one of my goals, but also we have car insurance coming due. And when you're paying for children to drive, especially when one of them is a teenage boy, car insurance is insane. So, and I mean, he's a good driver. He, he has never been in a wreck. He's never gotten a ticket. Um, my older one has, he hasn't. So there's that. I guess, you know, small favors, it's not any more expensive than it is because he does have a good driving record, but yeah, that's something I'm looking forward to too. When he finally rolls out of teenagehood and into his twenties, although I'm not looking forward to that because that means I'm old. I'm looking forward to it because it means some things will hopefully get less expensive, especially when he's having to foot the bill for some of them. So not for a little while yet. He's still in college and taking his college classes. So, you know, that's always been my deal with my kids when they're in school, that's your job. So I don't make my kids work. I didn't make my kids work. My older one did not work until she decided to take a year off. And then I said, okay, well, you're not just going to sit around here on my dime for a year you need to find a job. And she did. And it actually worked out really well. That year off kind of enabled her to see what it was like trying to find a job without a college degree and how much she hated working retail. And she decided to go back to school, but she also did it while she was working full time. So I'm super proud of her because she worked full time while she finished her degree. And she is now graduated and trying to do some things to finish up and get her teaching license. But yeah, super duper proud of her that she graduated while working full time and super duper proud of myself because she has no college debt. We managed to, I had money set aside from an inheritance for her, but it did not cover everything. The rest of it we had to make up and we did. And so far, 
Um, my son has a scholarship that helps and also we have managed to keep him from having to take out any student loans. So, yay. I'm gonna pat myself on the back for that one. I adulted good in that instance. Okay guys, I think at this point I'm ready to call it quits for today. Thank you so much for joining me and listening to me chat while you either watched or worked on your own um, work in progress. If you have a work in progress, share a picture. Uh, find me over on Instagram at Diamond Painting Anonymous and um, let me know what you're working on. I love to see what other people are working on. I find so many cool canvases that way. Um, and yeah, so thanks guys so much. Don't forget to do all the things on your way out. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and hit that bell notification icon so that you can be informed of future uploads like these. And as always guys, thanks so much for watching. See you next time.